Hi doctors, I've watched your show before and I know you say that I shouldn't hold it in if I have to urinate, but it's normal to hold it in for at least eight hours as we sleep. Isn't that just as bad? Well, you know, interestingly, when we are asleep at night, our body sometimes amps up the production of ADH, antidiuretic hormone, and that prevents you from making as much urine while you're sleeping. That's why a lot of us can sleep for eight hours during the night. However, plenty of us have to get up once during the night to go ahead and empty our bladder. And of course, it's that eternal question. You're laying there in bed, you've been asleep for five hours. Do I get up or not? Do I risk it or not? And you know, it's just one of those things where if lifestyle choices, try to eliminate, or don't drink as much water in the hours before you go to bed. That will decrease your chance of having to go to the bathroom at night. But if you're up constantly going to the restroom over and over again throughout the night, you really should go get evaluated because certain medical causes can increase your urination while you sleep at night. Well, our next question, it comes to us from Jasmine, who happens to be in our audience. Hey, what's going on? Hi, I have a leaky bladder and I would like to know how I can change my habit or train my bladder. And um, it's to the point where I'm constantly going to the bathroom at night like six to seven times. Okay. Which is very different than... Yeah, because that actually fits the definition of nocturne. Nocturne is if you have to get up more than two times in a night, even after you've restricted your fluids like two hours before you go to bed, now, do you also urinate when you cough and sneeze? Yes. So the best thing for you to do is actually go to a urologist or a gynecologic urologist and get it tested out. There's a lot of diagnostic tests that we can do to try and see exactly what it is. But in training your bladder, trying to do something um, that would help, it's those pelvic floor muscles right. that actually support your bladder. They form like a little basket um, on your pelvic floor and they okay. hold up your vagina and your bladder and actually your rectum to a certain point as well. Right. And just by exercising this, because childbirth, um, decreased levels in our hormone status yes. as far as estrogen, can all weaken um, the pelvis and those pelvic muscles. So a good way to to, to practice this would be kegels. And we always, as doctors say, do those kegels, you know, and the way to do it is when you're trying to urinate midstream, stop. And then once you've got that sort of, uh, when, once you've got that muscle contraction going and you've learned that, then you keep doing it over and over again. Well, women go, well, how do I know I'm doing it right? right. How can I see if it's doing, you know, helping anything other than just changes in, you know, whether or not you're going frequently? Well, they, now they've come out with actually some instruments and oh. as pretty as this look, it may look a little scary. <laughs> Um, this is actually called the intone, and basically you put it in vaginally, and it's, it works by electrical stimulation and um, biofeedback. So this actually is gonna send a little electrical shock vaginally, and so you wanna put it in vaginally, you want a snug fit, so you're gonna pump it up, and you're gonna make it, you're gonna make okay. it, see, there it goes. <laughs> oh, gosh. Bigger is better. What kind of? <laughs> in this case. Okay, so, but anyway, so what it is is it stimulates and then you get biofeedback that tells you if your muscle squeezing is actually being effective and your doctor actually calibrates this for you and then you're able to take this at home because before that, you would have to come to the doctor's office right. and, you know, we would do the electrical stimulation and, but now you can do it in the privacy of your own home and get feedback, know that you're, you know, actually progressing. Now, the electrical stimulation, I'm assuming it's a small stimulation. Yes. It's not a true severe shock. No, you would be able okay. to, yeah, put your hand on this and feel it. You just feel like a little, okay. little buzz. Well, oh, because okay. yeah. legitimately, that would be presumably uh, painful and uncomfortable. Right, no, no, so. the, this is okay. not uncomfortable yeah. at, at all. It's not unpleasant, maybe. So <laughs> I, I think the takeaway here is, Jasmine, to get this checked out, yeah. and there are options out there.